All right, I'm going to get into some formal programming for the spinning sign project. Remember the other day when I said this was new, that I hadn't done this in Burlington Middle Schools? Well, this is new, new. I'm going to try something with the programming that I haven't done with any of my middle school students yet. This could be an absolute disaster. I certainly hope not. But one thing's for sure, we always learn from our mistakes. So what you see up here on the screen is I have Robot C open. And I'm going to open a new template. But before I do that, let's just be assured that we are in the right platform type. So let's go Robot, Platform Type, Vex Robotics 2.0, and Robot, Platform Type, Natural Language, PLTW. That should look quite all right. Uh, since I'm in there, I'm going to go File, and I'm going to go to Open Sample Program. We haven't done this since we were working on the test then. Uh, I may have done it on an individual basis, but when we first started with the test beds, I had you go to a PLTW template under Sample Programs in the PLTW folder right here. So I'm going to open this template, and it'll show up on my desktop. Very basic. I have places for your title, team members, the date, the section, task description, pseudocode, and your natural language. We're going to do a quick save as on this. And don't save it in the PLTW folder, but for me it goes right back there. And uh, just because that's the last place I was at, don't do that. Go to uh, your shared folder or your desktop, and we will call this spinning sign. We'll save it. Okay, let's set up our motors and sensors. Uh, let's do this with the intent that we're going to get an A on the project. So in motors and sensors setup, uh, in port 1, uh, we're going to do port 1 for motor ports. We're going to do our sign motor with a capital M. Make sure the type is VEX393. We're going to apply that. And then we'll go to our digital sensors. We're going to have two of those. We're going to have a touch sensor for push button. And we're going to have another, let me double check my notes here, touch sensor for a trigger switch. Some of you did this yesterday. I had to do push button one, push button two. Uh, but this one I'm going to do trigger switch. My preference is the push button. They're more durable, but I seem to have an abundance of trigger switches. So I'm going to go apply and OK. So my buttons and my sensors show up there. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to expand natural language. Under natural language, there was one thing I was looking for if I can find it. Setup uh, wasn't in there. I got movement. Our start motors in there, are in there. I need that. Nothing in robot motion that I see that I need right off the bat. Uh, I need weight and I need intel. And so those are the ones that we're going to be looking at. Uh, there's one more thing I'm going to check out before I move on. Okay, so I did a quick pause there. There was something I was looking for. Now, I still have my movement expanded in natural language. I have my weight expanded and my intel. And I'm probably not going to use all of those. But up here above natural language in our text functions under control structures, if I expand that and I expand natural language, there's something up here that says repeat forever. And I'm going to drag this in. This is an advanced command. Not really so advanced, but after I started looking at it, um, it looks kind of simple. So I'm going to, I'm going to use this. So I had drug that over. And what you see is I have two sets of these curly braces. And within one set, I have this repeat forever. So what I'm trying to do here is when I do set up the code, uh, I want to be able to push button, always push button, turn it on, always push button, turn it off. So 
Under task description, we're going to push button to turn on um, a trigger switch to turn off. So that sounds pretty simple, right? So under pseudocode, we'll have until bump, if I can spell that right, start motor. And comma until trigger switch stop mode. Let's drag this over. Uh, now, the code is going to go within these brackets. See where it says the word body? This is where we're dragging our code in. And um, so this body is just a reference for where things go. I need and Intel, so I need to scroll over here in my text functions. I need my Intel bump to replace body, so I'll just delete body there. I'll need my start motor, and I'll need my Intel touch to stop the motor. Let me pause this real quick and see if I have this set up the way I like. Okay, double checking some things. This looks good. So now we need to put in our values. This this is it. This should be the program. Whether it works uh, is yet to be seen. But let's put in our values. So uh, for Intel bump, we're going to use push button with a capital B. Delay time. I usually put in something like one. It's just a fraction of a second. Uh, motor port, we call that sign motor with a capital M. Speed, remember in the sheet that I gave you, it said it needs to be slow enough so customers can see the spinning sign outside the shop. So let's make it something slow like 18. And then under Intel Touch, We'll use our trigger switch. All right, we'll go compile program. Well, I see no red X's, so what's left to do here is to download this to our project and see if it actually works. Uh, this looks pretty short compared to some of those clawbot activities, so hopefully uh, you have good luck with this. This repeat forever. Haven't done it yet, haven't seen it yet. I'm excited to see how it may or may not work for you folks. Remember, repeat uh, forever is under control structures, natural language, it's in there. And then your code fits in the brackets uh, for the body that it leaves. So, until next time, good luck.